Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the HR Leaders Podcast, a show where we explore the future of work with industry experts and HR executives on the world's leading global brands. Today, we're joined by Tony Zamora, who's the Vice President of HR for Ipsos in North America. Uh, welcome to the show, Tony. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. How are Thanks you doing? For joining us. Yeah, not too bad. Welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's it's uh, the reality of today's world, I think, right? At this point, uh, everybody's kind of working remotely or in their home or something. We just kind of have to adapt with the times, I guess, right now. Yeah, I'm like in the middle of this feud of battling for my home office against my wife. One of those ones where I was like, I'm not going to, I'm going to lose this battle. So I, yeah. I just, I've been relegated to the bedroom. We're all kind of scattered all over the country here. And so it's been interesting. Uh, one of the things that a lot of the groups are doing kind of as team building and uh, morale building is uh, competitions who has the the best home office situation oh. set up right now and so it's always fun to see some of those pictures come through of uh nice. either who has like their best coworker, which of course is their pet right or something and uh who has like the best home office so it's been interesting watching it before we jump into it tell everyone a bit about yourself your sort of background journey to where we are and then we'll see jump into the topic of today's show yeah, absolutely. So, um, so my journey will start a little bit where I started off. Um, I actually, my career first started off when I left high school, I actually joined the military, I joined the Navy, um, and I joined the Navy to fix electronics. So I always thought I was going to be a, a um, engineer or something. I always loved technology. And so I joined to uh, join the Navy, fixed electronics. I was fix, fixing like communications and um, commu- um, navigation radars. At some point, I ended up hurting my back. And so I couldn't really climb the towers and climb to the top of the mm-hmm. ships and everything. And they gave me a a desk job. The desk job ended up being HR. And uh, the reason really? being is I was always, yeah, when I joined the Navy, it was interesting. because I was things. Like yeah, all things, Navy. right? Um, the reason <laughs> being is, is I always, uh, when I joined the Navy, I always wanted to take most advantage I could out of it, right? So yeah. uh, the military has like great training opportunities, career development, education benefits. And so I was always looking into all those policies and how I could further develop myself. And then I would encourage those around me. I said, hey, you joined, you're not taking advantage of these benefits, you should do mm-hmm. this, right? So I kind of already had a strong interest in that, which is why they gave me a desk job in HR, which uh, I ended up loving. And so I ended up changing my career from, uh, or my education from engineering to HR um, and kind of been doing that ever since. So currently I'm um, the vice president of HR at Ipsos North America. And so I've been here for just, I'm about to hit my eight year mark. So in May, it'll be eight years. Before we jump into the to topic in more detail today, what, what do you think that the skills that you took from the military and being an engineer that has benefited you in HR, but and also on the flip side, maybe it worked against you. Well, what's worked for me? I think a couple of things, right? So I think the discipline in having um, processes defined, or if not, you define those processes so nothing catches you by surprise, and you always have a contingency plan, right? That's something that you learn in the military, <clears throat> and it, it, I think that's been extremely useful, especially in today's world, right, where everything's being kind of thrown at you, everything's changing, and uh, you mentioned just now that you suffer from a lot of anxiety. Um, so do I, actually. But yet when people look at me, they're like, wow, Tony, you remain really Same. calm in stressful yeah. situations, right? Yeah. And and again, I think I, I brought that from my military background and just remaining calm under stressful situations. And I think having that discipline and having, you know, a checklist of things that you need to accomplish um, and just knowing what you need to do every day, I think that really helps the anxiety. But plus mm-hmm. it helps you, like I said, um, during these um, difficult times. Yeah. Um, to jump into today's show, obviously, what are some of the recent HR trends and articles in the HR space? You know, you talk about that, that they focus on a lot of, of trends, but rarely ever discuss the need to look at the teams or the direct reports and their development. Can you explain more about your thoughts around that? Because it was really yeah. interesting when we first spoke. Yeah, I know. That's interesting. And that's, uh, again, we'll get to that in a second to one of, I was excited to have this interview with you, but if you look at any recent like management articles or blogs or uh, either management or uh, especially in HR, since we're speaking specifically about HR, when you look at top trends in 2020, right, what do you see? You see people focusing on analytics in HR, you focus on AI in HR, you focus on the employee experience, candidate, especially candidate experience, right? All of these kind of topics, but one thing that you never see as a trend, and maybe it's because it's not a trend, but one thing that you never see in any of these articles is how do you empower your teams and how do you empower those groups of people take the trends that you're talking about and put them into use in the workplace and uh, improve and support the client groups that you're working with. Like you never see an article on that. It's very rare that you see that as a trend. Again, maybe it's just a given, but if we're talking about all the tips and tricks on how to improve the workspace, why aren't we talking uh, specifically about the teams that are actually going to be working through some of these things? Why do you think that is? 
Should they just not get any clicks? Probably won't get any clicks. Like, it, right? It's a, maybe it's not because if it's a trend, then maybe again it should be a given. But I mean, if it's a given, why is it that we have? So, I mean, this is a. It, it's interesting, right? Another statistic that you see all the time is, or st statistic and uh, comment that you that you see all the time is that employees leave managers, they don't leave companies, right? Yeah, every day, yeah. Yeah, and then with the the statistic behind that is roughly what is that? Sixty seventy percent of employees leave their organizations strictly because of their manager, not because of the organization. And so, if you have those statistics and you have those um, all that backing behind it, why aren't we discussing again empowering and training your talent more often? I was just looking at some comments uh, on on LinkedIn. Paul, Paul Livia, thanks for joining us as always. He said, uh, "Have virtual coffees with your colleagues." or Teams through Zoom or Skype, definitely Paul, yep. with, with Paul Olivia. We're doing that as much as we can. Uh, we do it every, every morning. We have a meeting with the team at 9 a.m. and we constantly communicate throughout the day. So, All right. good tip there. Um, uh, um, yeah, one thing that we've been, uh, coffee is always good too. One thing that we've been trying to do and I've been trying to do with my team, especially uh, given the situation now, is um, if you could have. A, um, we obviously have virtual meetings, but if you could have video meetings just so you could kind of have that engagement, again, we kind of always tended to have that anyways, just because we were, um, so my team is scattered all over the US. So I don't have a team actually here in Chicago with me. Um, my employees are kind of all, all spread out. So we like the video meetings. But then in addition to that, what we've been trying to do, uh, I mean, it's been a little bit cold here in Chicago, but well, when the weather is nicer, we would go on uh, virtual walking meetings, right? So I'll take really? my, yeah. my headset, just go for a walk out in the city. They'll, they'll hear the background noise and everything. I hear them, their background noise, but that way it kind of gives you a little bit of, uh, gets the blood flowing, gives you a little bit of exercise, but we're still kind of having a meeting at the same time, yeah. which is nice. So how should HR leaders then engage teams to focus on what's trending? Yeah, how should HR leaders engage teams? So it's a great question. A couple of things. The way I look at this, right, is simple answer, I guess, is ask your teams, right? So if you're reading all these articles, all everything that's trending, what do they think? Ask for their ideas. I mean, as a leader, a lot of people say, okay, I'm the one um, steering the ship here, right? But it's really the employees who are putting everything into practice. So yeah, I could steer the ship, but it's everybody who's working day to day with the employee group, supporting our clients, um, taking these trends and putting them into practice. So ask them, you read this article or you attended the seminar, how, how, we, how could we put it into practice given our the constraints of our organization, right? So every organization is going to have constraints. They have their processes, procedures, they have their way to doing things. So the way you read something isn't maybe the way you're going to directly apply it in your organization. They're the ones that know how you could modify some things and introduce them. So ask them, right? So one of the things that I like to do, and I've been doing this for, for uh, uh, probably a few years now, is I like to have a monthly, um, what I call a monthly strategy session with the team, right? Um, and it's strictly where we focus on what's happening outside our organization and how, uh, again, I always end with how do we turn this into actions into the organization, right? So within those 30 days, the team Again, they attend seminars, conferences, they read a lot of stuff that's happening online. Um, again, a lot of the trending articles. So we have, we pick a topic on that monthly um, strategy session and we say, okay, this is what you learned. Again, how are we going to turn that into action? And it's a great way to um, collaborate. It's a great way to bounce ideas off of each other. And again, it's a great way to get insights on how we're actually yeah. putting actions behind it. And it's really exciting as well because it's something different from your day to day that you mm -hmm. can get involved in, and and you can kind of almost do like kind of what Google did, where you can focus on a passion project and then link that back to business, right? And that's where sort of Google Maps came from, and Gmail, and mm -hmm. all these other things is through, is through through giving people that time to actually explore what they're passionate about, and then connect that back in to how we can leverage that as a business as well. What, what are some examples of some of the ideas that have come out of those strategy meetings? Yeah, that's a that's a great point about Google. I mean, uh, not many organizations have the luxury of being able to dedicate. I think what does Google spend yeah, like 20 percent like, of their time like to, yeah. to, uh, passion projects? Which again, not a lot of organizations get that luxury. Of but again, a, a, a lot of organizations they're focusing on, on you know the day to day work. Uh, again, yeah. the way I look at it is our meetings last an hour, maybe an hour and a half, um, and it's dedicated strictly to strategic initiatives, right? So um, I think every team should be able to, to devote an hour, hour and a half once a month at least to this i mean it's not a lot of time and again 
going to what you just said about Google, think about like, like the success and all the projects that have come out of that. Um, with our one hour, one hour and a half that we have every month, we've had some some uh, incredible success over the last couple of years. And one simple thing is, of course, um, that, that we talked about was we had a meeting at roughly about a year ago, maybe on employment branding. So again, we, we saw, I'm sure that was like at the beginning of the year, and it was um, focusing on employment branding and how to get that brand um, out there and, and empower our employees to share the Ipsos brand. And so we developed a training platform where we're not only teaching them about how to share the, the employment brand, but also how to share their personal brand, right? So anytime you share something, um, I'm looking at the screen now. So yeah, uh, I'm representing Ipsos, but I'm also representing Tony Zamora on, on this platform, right? And so, yeah. And so how do you how do you really get your own personal brand out there as well as the company's brand? That, that's one of the um, training issues that we came out. Another thing that we did, we talked about, this had to be about middle of last year, I think. So one of the meetings that we had, monthly meetings, it was talking about a uh, returnity project, right? And it's really how do you inc- how do you reintroduce parents back into the workplace after they take leave of absence um, when they had a child, right? And I know it's different kind of in the country where you're in. I think you have a, a longer leave period. Here yeah. in the U.S., it's it's different, right? It varies. It's roughly about um, three months or so. But even three months, just being away from the workplace for three months. It's a different world when you come back, right? You could, might, you might have a different team. There might have been some turnover. There might be some new projects. And so, how do you really re-onboard them, reintroduce an employee into the workplace? Um, and so, we took that strategic meeting again, an hour discussion. We're like, wait, we could really make something happen with this. And so, we're developing a really uh, comprehensive returnity project for employees, but also for the managers um, who manage those employees coming back. Like, you can't just expect them to come back. They've been gone for several months, and you're just going to throw them back into the fire. It's really a reorientation, a re-onboarding process for those employees. So again, yeah. another example that we had. When we all spoke as well, you were talking about um, the two biggest things that you always believe in and push within your team. Could you share those? One of the biggest things that I always push is continuing outside learning. It's so easy to get stuck in your day-to-day um, and this is the way we do things in the company. And this is the way I, I, I'm learning from the team. And this is the way I'm learning from my manager. But again, how do you explore what's happening and what's trending outside of the organization, right? You don't always have to reinvent the wheel. So figure out what other companies are doing, whether that's a competitor, whether that's a similar company, whether that's somebody, be them even be disruptive and think about think outside the box, right? So always be exploring what's happening outside your organization. And the second point to that question that I'm really passionate about is how do you take those insights and put them into action? You, you were talking about before, like a huge perk of what you do is actually working with a team of diverse yeah. people across the US. Can you talk about how you create a safe space for them to bring ideas to the table and, and 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 make sure they're always challenging the status quo. So like I mentioned, the two biggest things I'm, I'm passionate about is, of course, outside learning, right? And then the second part is how do you turn those in, um, outside learning into action? Um, and so I mentioned we have a monthly strategy meeting to discuss those things. Uh, those those strategy meetings are really amongst a team, right? That I have. Um, we have some people that that the team mentors as well, some some um, junior HR folks. And so what we do on those meetings, which is interesting, uh, I, I kind of like this idea. I don't actually lead those meetings, right? So I can I might probe them with some questions and everything. But what we actually do is we do we host those meetings on a rotating basis. Um, and so each employee, they'll they'll have their turn to come up and present an idea that they learned, and everybody kind of brainstorms it. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One is um, I want them to share something that they're passionate about. So what did they learn? And they say, hey, I'm really energized and and excited about this. Do you think this will work in the organization? And you know, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. But there's no what I what I definitely tell them is there's no right or wrong answer, right? Bring everything. It could be completely disruptive and out of the box, but bring it to the table, and we'll discuss it as a team. So that there's again never a, a wrong situation or, or something that's bad that, that you're going to bring to the table. Let's, t- let's yeah. throw everything out there because odds are we, again, uh, we might not be able to do it exactly the way they, they learned it or they presented it, but we'll tweak it somehow and find a way to fit it into the organization. Right. So I try mm-hmm. to create a safe space that way, but another great, perk and uh, I guess benefit to having the meetings that way is going back to how I try to empower and train the team also is it gives them the opportunity to develop a couple of things. One is how do you put together a presentation and sell it to somebody, right? So, yeah. they, so they have to put together yeah. very important skills to have uh, even uh, in HR. 
because at some point as they grow in the organization, they're going to be pitching ideas to, you know, senior leaders of the organization. So from a very early start, it gives them the opportunity to, one, pull together content in a very uh, concise way and a PowerPoint or whatever they want to do to present it, usually it's PowerPoint. And then two, how are they going to present it and speak to it and sell it to the team, right? So this is what I learned. This is how I think you could be put into place into the organization. Um, so it gives them the uh, practice of presenting in front of the group. And we do that um, the majority of the time over video, because again, the team is all kind of scattered across the US, so we don't really see them in person. But again, it gives them that opportunity to not only are they presenting, but now you actually have an audience that you're presenting to, which um, hope they realize that it, it is a good opportunity to do that because at some point you are going to have an audience in a boardroom, again, uh, presenting um, and pitching your ideas and suggestions to a leadership team. So again, from a very early start, it's a great opportunity to train that skill set. What else is on top of the mind right now? One thing I just want to, I guess, share that always sticks with me. You know, I have a quote pulled up over here. Um, what it says is, when I talk to a manager, I get the feeling that they are important. When I talk to a leader, I get the feeling that I am important, right? So mm. that's one quote that's always stuck with me. And I, it, it just, um, especially as I lead the team, I've always said this to, especially to new and upcoming managers. I say one of the most humbling jobs that you're ever going to have is being a leader, right? It doesn't matter in what capacity, but once you have people directly reporting to you, you're literally taking their career and livelihood into your own hands, right? So I think people should be very humble about that and think through ways on how they could continue to empower them and develop them to be the future, in this case, future of HR, because, um, uh, yeah, we could talk about trends and everything that's happening in the industry. But again, as I'm, when we started off this in, um, this discussion, it's they are the people that are going to be doing it. And they are really the people who, again, they're the future of any organization. So how do you empower them? So they're happy not only in their career, but in their personal lives. And ultimately, they'll once they're happy and comfortable and in a safe space, they're going to bring a lot of that passion and energy into the workplace. So again, that's yeah. really the humbling part of me of being, uh, or for me of being a leader. And, and I completely agree with you. And um, I think that's even more so highlighted during these times. Right. right now. For me, all that's been the top of my mind is my, is my, is my team, my customers, my family, mm -hmm. you know, just looking after my team, making sure they got the support that they need, making sure that we, you know, find a way to keep going as a business because their livelihoods and my own are on the line. You know, mm -hmm. they have mortgages, they have families to feed, and that's been the number one sort of priority mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, so definitely can agree with that. Before we wrap up, I want to kind of jump into um, a quick fire round that we should do okay. with guests now. I'm kind of throwing you off guard now. Oh, so thanks. <laughs> five questions, and you have no longer than thirty seconds to give us some amazing answers. <laughs> All right, perfect. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming a senior HR leader? I think just experience, time and experience. So I, I think it just takes a little bit of time to grow into a, a senior leader. But once it happens, it happens. And you won't even think about it. All of a sudden, you're in the hot seat and you're an uh, HR leader, right? So uh, <laughs> for those that, that are trying to accelerate it, just give it time. Don't try to rush it. Be patient. Be patient. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Learn the business, right? So especially in HR, folks, we always tend to focus on the people aspect of the business, but I think you should focus on, have a strong understanding of financials and how money is generated within the organization and how people help to keep the business going. Um, what's one book to recommend? One recent book that I just finished is called Rocket Men. So it's about the story of Apollo 8 going to the moon. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if you'd know that story, but it's interesting. Yeah, because, story, yeah. yeah there's so many leadership lessons that you could take from that and I, it's funny because we actually just had a uh, one of our strategy meetings that i mentioned we just had that and i shared the story of the um apollo 8 mission and how those three astronauts going to the moon for the first time really have had to operate as one unit and i think that that story of teamwork um especially in uncertain times as they were in the late 60s is so vital especially as as we're going through situations now yeah definitely you can only imagine what it takes mm -hmm. to eat through something like that which is historic right exactly never, never been done ever mm -hmm. um so yeah pretty cool there i'll link that in the description for everyone um what are some online resources that you use then to stay up to date with current events your own learning online resources one thing that i really like listening to and uh and i actually presented uh the uh, last year i think is disrupt hr so i'm sure you're familiar with their yep. their format um i like that because it's very similar to what we do is uh 
other people bring ideas to the table, right? So mm -hmm. I, I like your, your content as well and the, and the um, in your format. The disrupt one is, you know, people going up on stage presenting an idea and something that they're very passionate about in a short time period. It, it was like a five minute presentation and mm -hmm. you get a, you know, a multitude of ideas. If, if, if you're able to attend a disruptive event, a disruptive HR event in person, it's great. And within an hour, hour and a half, um, you get tons of content, but if not, there's great videos out there as well. So. Yeah, fantastic. And then lastly, what's one thing about your business that you're most excited about today? One thing I'm most excited about the business is at Ipsos, we measure consumer confidence. I think that's more so important now than ever, especially when other organizations are might be pulling back funding, might they don't know what to do especially they, a lot of organizations tend to pull back funding for research. I think now it's more important to really figure out how how consumers are reacting to the evolving world that we have around us. Mm. Um, and so there's tons of great things happening within the organization. Again, not only consumerism and how they're purchasing, but it's really how are people behaving um, in um, current times. So just, uh, I guess, a little plug if people want to see that, uh, check out our website for sure. There's tons of research that we're sharing and uh, a lot that's happening in the industry and just with citizens as a whole. So definitely check out what's happening. Cool. And then last but not least, if there's sort of one parting piece of advice, what would that be? And then where can everyone connect with you personally if they want to reach out, say hello? One piece of advice, and we, we touched on this um, quite a bit, is never stop growing, right? Never stop looking to see what's what's new, what's different, and how you could apply that. Um, I think it's, it helps you um, remain energized and it helps you continue to grow in your career and, and personally, right? So just continue pushing the needle and pushing uh, boundaries and never kind of stay contained into into what you're doing day to day. Um, so that's, a, I guess, the biggest piece of advice. Uh, people could always connect with me on LinkedIn. So Tony Zamora, I think it's pretty easy to, uh, to find me. But, uh, but yeah, definitely reach out on LinkedIn or I'm on Twitter as well. So Tony D Zamora on Twitter. Love it. Well, I'll link all of that and everything that Tony's been talking about, by the way, guys, I'm going to link in the description. So make it life easier for all of you uh, as well. And to your point about uh, your last piece of advice, now is a great time. You know, something I've actually been over the last few days starting to do some hobbies and things that I have put on hold for year, for years, like drawing and painting is something that I was very passionate about. But you know, for the last 10 years, I haven't had time, but I've kind of picked up those hobbies again because I have a bit of time at home now with all of, without the travel i'd have there's a lot of times there's never there's no excuse anymore if we don't have time <laughs> to to be able to do it so use all this right. time to to learn develop and it will keep you motivated and positive as well so apart from that tony i appreciate your time stay safe i'll speak thank to you, you soon and um i look forward to uh catching up with you in a few weeks to see how you are okay sounds good thank you stay safe out there mm -hmm. no see you later take see care. everyone bye